Yo guys, Punk Rat with another video. Here's an interesting piece that I've actually been planning on making for a good while now. This concept was actually inspired by some other videos that were pretty popular before the release of Classic WoW talking about things that you may have forgotten from vanilla, but I wanted to take it a step further and talk about some things that you definitely didn't remember from the original vanilla because they actually never hit the game. Mechanics that were part of the alpha or beta phase that never actually made the live release of WoW in its original state back in 2005. There's actually a ton of these. If you really start searching online, doing your research, you're going to find there's so many things that'll pretty much blow your mind, which were intended to be part of World of Warcraft. So what I did for this video is I took the most outrageous ones, the most interesting ones, and compiled them in a list. So this is the craziest mechanics that never made it to World of Warcraft. Let's get into it. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is probably the most surprising to you. So during the really, really early days of concepting for World of Warcraft, there used to actually be a distinction between shields and bucklers. In today's world, a buckler is just another name for a shield, it's synonymous. But back then, there was actually an item tag distinction between a buckler and a shield. They were two entirely different items. And funnily enough, rogues and hunters were actually able to use bucklers, so they were basically like smaller versions of shields that you could use in certain scenarios. This means that all the different shields that you see, especially in the lower levels when they're called buckler, well back then they were actually meant for rogues and hunters, and that's why all of the bucklers tend to be smaller than the average shield. Now one thing that you might often hear is people complaining or people questioning why they can't use a specific weapon. A great example of that is paladins not being able to use daggers, priests can't use swords, druids can't use swords. Well it seems like in the really really early days of World of Warcraft, Blizzard had intentions of being much more lenient on item restrictions that certain classes were able to gain access to, and this of course would have made a completely different World of Warcraft than we're aware of today. It's kind of interesting to think how a rogue or a hunter would be using shields in their everyday combat. Rogues may be popping adrenaline rush and blade flurry with a shield and tanking a bunch of mobs while AoEing them down. In PvP scenarios, equipping a shield before you get stunned. Honestly, in PvP, hunters might just always want to opt for having a shield or at least swapping to a one hand and shield quite often. This I think is a really interesting one, and like I said, this game would have been completely different if Blizzard ended up going more towards this style of game design. Now here's another really interesting one, which is kind of interesting if you relate it to World of Warcraft in its current state in retail. Hunters initially were actually using focus as a resource system, the same resource that their pets use. Apparently, the only distinction was that they actually had to remain still in order for it to regenerate. So it wasn't like an energy bar or like a pet focus bar that's just constantly filling back up. They had to remain still, they had to stop and shoot, maybe cast an aim shot, and then it would start regenerating. Apparently, the reason that they scrapped it out and gave them mana instead is just because it was completely busted, completely overpowered. It's kind of an interesting thought, because back in original vanilla, hunters were kind of broken. People thought it was such a powerful class in PvP, I remember having tons of hunter friends who pretty much every BG would be like 30 and 2 in terms of kill death ratio, but nowadays that everyone else is so good at the game, we've realized that hunters are actually a pretty mediocre class. They're not bad, they're not good, they're kind of in the middle. So it's kind of interesting, imagine if hunters had focus as a resource, maybe they'd be a better class, maybe tier 1. I doubt they'd be overpowered, but maybe they could compete at a higher level. Okay, now here's an interesting one that I had to put on, but we're not going to spend too much time on it. Have you ever wondered why there's so many cloaks, especially in lower level zones? There's so many different varieties of different types of grey level cloaks, white cloaks, from vendors all over the place, there's so many of them, it doesn't really make sense why they would have so many different variations of such a simple item. Well this is because initially during the early early days, cloaks actually had different armor types. So cloth cloaks, leather cloaks, mail, kinda doesn't really make sense, but apparently that was the case. Now have you guys ever thought, there aren't enough quests in Classic WoW. I finished this entire zone and I still don't have enough experience to move to the next one. I'm stuck having to grind dungeons or grind mobs or trek across, take a boat to the next continent in order to get access to new quests that are relatively close to my level range. Well stated in an interview a couple years ago, apparently World of Warcraft in its original design state, there were only a hundred quests for Alliance and Horde specifically intended. One hundred quests for your entire time leveling up from 1 to level 60. I mean just imagine that. To be honest in today's state of affairs, people are pretty much just doing dungeon boosting or AoE grinding, dungeon grinding, so a lot of you guys probably do less than a hundred quests to get up to 60. But for people leveling normally, doing quests, this would be pretty brutal and you'd be forced 
to have to either do dungeon grinding or solo grinding. At least with a lot more quests, you have the option. Now, this one is way more common, and it's something that I've actually mentioned in a video a long time ago, but were you guys aware that during the early, early days of World of Warcraft, Blackrock Spire, Strathholm, Skolomance, and Blackrock Depths were all raids. Now, Blackrock Spire is still a raid, but initially it was meant for 15 people, and it got scaled down to be only a 10 player raid. But Strathholm and Skolomance were also intended to be 15 player raids. Apparently, these 15 player raids were so difficult that people were completely unable to do them, even with 15 players. So Blizzard actually went back and completely nerfed them and set them in the five player state that we've become accustomed to. Now, as cool as it probably would have been to actually have 15 man raids before getting into 40 man raiding. I can't help but think, could you imagine running Strathholm dead side and having to roll against maybe like four or five melee just to get your cape of the Black Baron? Maybe it was for the best for them to actually scale it down to five players. But I think from a gameplay perspective, it would probably be pretty cool to have big group raids. Okay, now this one is actually really hilarious. Were you aware? that Torrens initially during the really early days of Beta and Alpha were unable to ride mounts. Now we see little remnants of this in the sense that Torrens can't ride skeletal warhorses. If you look at the tooltip for the actual item itself, you'll see that it says races, orc, undead, and troll, literally omitting the Torrent. Well, to go even further beyond that, during the early concept days of World of Warcraft, Torrens were unable to ride mounts at all, there were no Kodos. Instead, what they had was an ability called Planes Running, which was on a 10 second cast, yes, 10 seconds, which they were able to learn once they hit level 40. But it wasn't exactly just a 10 second cast standing there. What it was is you would trigger the ability and then the Torrent would just start running. And over that 10 second duration, which is basically like the pseudo cast time, you would pick up more and more speed until at the end of the 10 seconds, you would reach the max mount speed. Like most things, the worst part about it is that every single time a Torrent was hit while planes running, it would immediately dissipate the effect. So could you imagine, on a mount you get dazed and then you get taken off and it's a very low chance that that actually happens. But as a Torrent, if you get hit off of your planes running, you're immediately dismounted technically. This was awful game design, but it's probably a little tidbit of WoW history that I think is really interesting. Now have you guys ever heard that, especially back in the day, Blizzard had an alliance bias? You can find forum posts dating from back in the days talking about Blizzard and the bias that they've had towards Alliance throughout the years. Well, this might actually dispel that notion. So originally, Nomergon was actually planned to be an extra major city for the Alliance faction. It wasn't supposed to be a dungeon. In fact, there was supposed to be an elevator connected from Ironforge to Nomergon. Also, Goldshire outside in Elwyn Forest, outside of Stormwind, was actually a massive city hub. It wasn't a total city, but it was way bigger than what it is today. But Blizzard actually scrapped both of those concepts and opted for for what we know today, specifically because they did not want to create a faction imbalance. They didn't want to do something for one faction and not replicate the same for the opposing, meaning having an extra city in Nomergon wouldn't be fair to the Horde who only have Thunderbluff, Undercity, and Ogremar, and Goldshire having a massive low level village or hub wouldn't be fair to Horde who didn't have access to the same thing. Of course, they could have just created one for them, but instead they opted to just cut a lot of the stuff out of the game. Now this one is something that's actually widely talked about, but it's so ridiculous that we have to speak about it. So the undead race on Horde side, back in the early days I believe of Alpha, actually interacted as a real undead. This meant two things. The first was that priests and paladins were able to target them with their undead specific spells, so exorcism and shackle being some two very easy examples. And the next thing was Will of the Forsaken was actually a passive buff. It it wasn't an ability that they would use to break out of fears and charms. It was a passive permanent buff that made them immune to sleep, polymorph, and fear effects in their entirety. But of course, if you go through most forum posts talking about this, you'll notice that that didn't last too long. In fact, it was changed really quickly, and they became humanoids, interacting just like everybody else in the world of PvP. Now, staying on the line of just crazy things that affect PvP, here's something that a lot of you guys are going to be really shocked by. Mages initially had a spell called Invisibility. Well, mages in later expansions actually do have an Invisibility spell, but it works a lot differently than it did back in the beta. It requires you to use it, then not get hit for a certain period of time, then you go invisible. Well, back then, during the alpha, mages were able to go invisible, and while invisible, they were actually able to see other players, which is probably why Blizzard changed that in later expansions, making it so that while 
while invisible you can't actually see anybody. But the worst part about it is that you were able to cast spells while invisible. This means you were able to sneak up on people and hard cast a pyroblast out of nowhere and just one shot people out of stealth. Now just like the thing with undeads, it was swiftly taken out of the game based on the player base's outcry. Now keeping in line with mages, they actually had another spell which would probably make you hate mages even more. Now what's the one thing that you see in every main city in WoW Classic? You see a ton of mages hanging out advertising that they're selling ports and selling water. Well again, during the early early times of World of Warcraft, they had a spell called Khadgar's Unlocking. And this was a lockpick, meaning they were able to open boxes for other people. So not only were mages selling water and portals to make gold out in the main city, they'd also be able to take a market share away from rogues and opening their lockboxes. Now I'd imagine if they had this and a couple of other things that they had during the alpha and beta, they'd probably be even more hated than they already are. Although let's be honest, people don't hate mages, they're just jealous. So here's another concept that people have been talking about in World of Warcraft for years. But it wasn't only the player base that used to think about this concept. In fact, before we were even thinking about it, Blizzard was actually working on it. What we're talking about is player housing. So again, in the early, early times of World of Warcraft, player housing was actually planned to be part of the game. Who knows why they never implemented it, it's probably just because it wasn't technically feasible, and honestly considering garrisons and warlords of drainer, maybe it was a good idea that they never implemented this at all. I think guild housing could have been interesting, like maybe having like an instance placed in Stormin that your guild can all zone into, kind of like the Knight's Quarter, but who knows how that would actually affect the social elements of the game. But here's a screenshot from back in the day a really really long time ago, where you have a game designer from back in the day who's using a spell called Create Housing, and right in front of him is just a little humble home that gets created. So it was definitely a thing. There was a lot of things that were much different. Another example that we can actually add on to this is Dwarf Stone Form actually reduced the dwarves' movement speed. Now I think thematically this actually does make sense considering they're going into a stone form, a form of stone, it would probably impede their ability to move quickly or move their joints. But probably a pretty hefty price to pay at the same time. And I'm sure a lot of you guys that are playing these classes are pretty happy that these never really made the real version of WoW that we know. And one more little thing, talking about dwarves, dwarves were actually able to be mages as well. So that's actually something that we saw in Cataclysm, and to be honest, playing a dwarf mage is something that I did back then and I absolutely loved it. But back during the early concepting of World of Warcraft, dwarves were actually able to be mages, and I, I actually think that's pretty cool. Maybe that's something that we kinda do wish happened, or I don't know about you guys. But anyways, that's all I got for now. There's so many of these that we can go over, I'll actually pop in the description down below a very famous post that I used as reference for this video. It's a long list of old World of Warcraft mechanics that a very old school player compiled together. And I guess back in the day this kind of went viral as much as a forum post can go viral and it got passed around like crazy and I've had it just bookmarked on my internet tab ready to make a video on it at some point. So if you guys want to delve deeper into this, go ahead, click the link, and read some of the things that I actually didn't cover in this video. Now if you enjoyed this piece and you want to see more like it, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, of course, you know the drill soldiers. Hit the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video straight out of the red oven. And with that said, thanks for watching, I wish I could be a dwarf mage, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.